We're joined in the kitchen again by Lexi from Bessem. And now Lexi, last time we used this, we made little it's a ricotta filled pikelets, That's aren't they? correct, yes, with, uh, with Teresa. Teresa. Yes. We're doing a savoury this time. Absolutely. Most people look at this pan when it doesn't have a lid on it and they just think breakfast or pikelets. But when you do put the lid on the pan, it's like the Bessemer magic and it becomes a complete oven. So I'm going to show you today how you can just make mini quiche in here. So we've already cut out our rounds so that they're the right size for the, um, the hole. Um, so we'll just start off by putting them in. I'm just pressing them down. Now, if you are making a pie, because I quite often make little pies in here as well. Yep. So when you're making a pie, you really probably want to make your rounds that little bit bigger so that they hang over the edge a little bit. And you can crimp them. Yeah, so that when you put your filling in and the, the centre circle that goes on the top is a little bit less and you can pinch around the edges and that gives it that seal so that your filling doesn't ooze out. Good tip. Yep. So I might just chip. put it placing this. If you wouldn't mind, that'd be great. So just make sure that you press it in. The first batch, of course, always takes that little bit longer to cook. But once you've tipped that lot out and you go and do your second batch, you know, the, you have to work quickly because the pan is warm up, but they'll cook a lot quicker than the first one does. You've got your heat into your pan. Running. That's right. So while you're doing that, we'll spin it around. A little lazy Susan. Yeah, and I'll just put a little bit of cheese on the top. You can have different fillings. Also, it doesn't have to be a quiche, it can be um, a tart as well. So these days, a lot of those little savoury tarts are very in. Yep. So you can use that and, and just flatten the mixture more and you might put a little bit of boccaccini, maybe a half a cherry tomato, yep. and it just makes like those little tarts, savoury tarts that you do. And they, so they're very really versatile. Lovely. Very versatile. So now we'll just pour over our mixture and take your time. That's, and I always put it in a jug because otherwise you end up with a mess all over. So you just dribble a little bit at a time. You're only really limited by your imagination. Once Absolutely. you learn these techniques, it's yes. up to your imagination to come up with different yeah, ways to use exactly. it. exactly. So the first batch will probably take, you know, to allow the heat, we have to allow that heat to come into the pan. So um, probably 10 minutes, but the second batches will take a lot quicker. So they may even be done in five. So that's why you cooked off your bacon beforehand? Exactly, yes. A little sprinkle of paprika. Paprika to give it that little bit of colour because um, as you remember with our cookware it only browns where the food actually touched the surfaces of the pan. Yep. So you know I, actually I probably will flip them over anyway. Huh. Yeah we'll see how they go. The paprika gives it a lovely colour though doesn't it? It's yeah. like a blush. Yeah. Now you can see we have a very different handle on yeah. this one. Why is that? Well this handle here is um, designed for balance. So the idea is you just pop your hands in the centre and your arms your automatically rest on your hips and you take all the weight yep. on your hips. So it keeps the pan nice and level as well. well Whereas designed. if you try to grab it like that, you'll end up losing control of the pan. And it just saves you having to have another side handle because yeah. normally a frying pan will have the two. Yeah. So this one gives it the perfect balance. Who designed that? Some very clever person. Yeah. Okay, so now again, we're gonna activate it into an oven. So we just pop our lid on. This is the 28 centimetre lid, so it does have seven other bases that it will actually fit. So it's very versatile. We're fine for the little indicator. Open up the vent once again, and we're going to go to our medium heat and pop that on. And again, go through the process of holding our fingers to the centre of the pan on a slow count of three. It's going to tell me this is touch hot. That's equal to a moderate oven. I'll take my fingers off and that's when we start timing them. Every stove is different, so you know we just gauge it from there. And they should take about 10 minutes from when it's hot. So they don't need long on the other side, do they? No, they don't. We just want to make them a little bit golden. Yep. Okay, so there we go. That's our finished product. So I'll pop that over here. Turn this off and we'll place them onto the oil. Well, I'll let you do that. Oh, thank you. This is going to be a you're battle. The, you're the food stylist. Between you and Teresa as to which one... The, the gourmet the, griddle bake-off. Yeah, which one produced the best. Oh, I think they're both good. I love those pikelets as well. Yeah, they are very good. Mm. For kids, kids love that kind of stuff. Yeah. So the fact that you can whip them up for kids in a matter of 15 minutes will be absolutely fantastic mm. for mums and dads at home. And it's good lunchbox food. Thanks, Lexi. Thank you, Ben. Okay.